good afternoon good morning and good evening we are so ever you are welcome to focus on liberia round table africa i am the correspondent edward amara um, i'm here to give you a final analysis on events in nigeria and the plan of the opposition parties especially the opposition people's democratic party and the people's or uh, the labor party led by peter obi and uh atiku abubakar their plan can i say an impending plan to take uh the electoral commission to court or bola amen tinubu challenging his victory to court um, Nigeria is very important, Nigeria is so interesting, and Nigeria have laid a foundation that either Africa can succeed or may end up to conduct huge amount of controversy into what it does. And I don't know if the current situation in Nigeria will definitely set a good space for Africa, taking into consideration how people's hope have been dumping their faith, hope, and belief into INEC, that is the Independent Nigeria Electoral Commission, we are uh, robustly dash. Maybe uh, people are now frustrated. There is dispotency into the state of Anambara, that is the state of uh, uh, Peter Obi, the man who came and challenged the traditional two parties into Nigeria, that is. Uh, the ruling all progressive congress and the pdp and uh there were a lot of things that actually happened but, but today before coming to the election i want to lay certain foundation about the country nigeria and uh what exactly has been nigeria political tales if whether it's something that is actually worked of emulation or we should be very careful and we are all hoping praying and wishing that um uh, Nigeria peace should not or Nigeria should not degenerate into another uh, state or failed state into Africa because already Nigeria has a lot on its plate. We are seeing the activities of Boko Haram, IPOP, banditry, corruption, maybe uh, money laundering. Almost everything is just worse in Nigeria. Now they have conducted maybe one of the most or arguably one of the worst elections in our history since the 24 years uninterrupted democracy. No, although if one also have to compare it to uh, the election that took place under uh, the watchful eyes of uh, how under the watchful eyes maybe of uh, Olu Sekon or Basanjo when Omar Adwa came into power we also saw another very controversy. So I want to take you down memory lane. Let us try to observe certain things here, understand what actually went on into Nigeria and how we as Africans can be able to uh, maybe rewrite our own history. I think a careful explication, if not the research, need to be done into our past history. Sometimes some people tell you that history is not only meant to be read. Rather, right? history is also correct our past mistakes maybe we cannot undo what happened into the past we also have the opportunity to ensure that we do not commit such mistakes but unfortunately we have seen that those mistakes have been repeated into africa on a daily basis and a lot of young people that is why in certain african countries today you are seeing both apartheid no wonder there is also voter there was voter apartheid into the current electionary process that ended into liberia i mean into nigeria you see around let's let work before coming down to history there was actually both voting apartheid into nigeria or their current election now we are seeing less than why go and announce a result if you are so sure stone sure about you going and announce result in the early hours of march the first you would have waited until the next one everybody gathered and you tell them into the face that he actually lost the election but maybe he did it in the right way in just knowledge in just wisdom to ensure that maybe the time that he announced the result by uh by six seven o'clock this morning everybody accepted we you know the reaction of people certain people their first reaction to certain 
something. Maybe if he had done that within the day time, maybe security reason, who knows, he might have conducted, uh, consulted securities and they, they might have told him what to do, when to announce the results and and what uh, what could be the consequences of announcing the result uh, uh, within the daytime when everybody will be active, vigilant and with watchful eyes to see what to do. I think there was both in apartheid in the just concluded election into Nigeria. One of these places that we discovered, let's see, around 93 million, and out of the 93 million that registered, uh, 87 million actually collected their PVC, that is their personal voter ID card. 87 million people collected their PVC. Then, out of that 87 million people that conduct, uh, collected their PVC, only 28% of those people votes, voted. Only 28% of those people voted. Let us say 6 plus 6 is 12. Then uh, plus 8, that is around 20 million. It's an insult. So around 60 million people did not actually come out to vote. So have you seen, when our politicians are feeling us, there is now voting apartheid into the continent. And if arguably around 60 million of Nigeria did not participate into the electionary process, it means around 10 or 15 countries in smaller countries like uh, where I am Sierra Leone, talk about Guinea maybe, Liberia and whatsoever country. Oh, a huge amount of people did not actually vote. We got already know that politicians fail them. And I have been saying all this why. I think the election result is a disappointment, but definitely not a surprise. It's a huge disappointment, but definitely not a surprise. Reason being, we all know how corrupt it has been. I think since Nigeria started her democracy under uh uh, under uh, Chief Olu Second, Matthew, Akiola, Obu, Ogun, Boyi, Aremu, Obasanjo, commonly called Obasanjo. It is the only ones in their history that an incumbent lost election. That was in 2015. When Jugudlo uh, Jonathan lost the election to the outgone president. I want to say an outgone president now. Oh, can I say outgoing because he has not yet handed power to uh, Bola Amen Tinubu, his political godfather. I think uh, that was the only time that an incumbent president failed to be re-elected into Nigeria. So let's start down history. Buta apartheid, there is confrontation. Peter Obi of the Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party have decided to take the election result or to challenge Bola Amentinebu, Ashiwaju Bola Amentinebu's uh, victory into court. But the court normally we say is the last hope of the common man, but will they ever? I mind you, Nigeria spent over 70 million, over 700 million I mean, dollars to conduct this presidential election. Do they have the economic power to reconduct another election? We are the the, the shortcomings, the rigging, maybe an other voting destruction that took place on the 25th February 2023. We are they enough that can warrant the cancellation of this result? I think I'm not a legal person. The court will definitely decide and Nigerians will air their opinion and Africa at large will keep watching and we will keep watching at it at the back. Maybe if some political analysts are watching at it, Maybe uh, we can see some political analysts will tell you that it is the electoral commission mandate to continue on the declaration of the result instead of to halt it. Because that is their natural mandate given to them, their constitutional mandate. It is up to the opposition leaders to take their issues to court. And if the court deem it necessary that those election results should be nullified, they should be declared void, null and void, and there is another election should be conducted, it is up to them. But Mahmoud uh, Yakubu did what he could do according to some political analysts. And if he had, if he had listened to the calls of the opposition to halt the calling of the election result, would have been like trying to take control from a body that shouldn't mandate them. And the mandate has been carefully executed. So let's see. In 1999, 
That was when Nigeria started her rule to democracy in 1999. That was when Nigeria started her rule to democracy. There was an election held in 1999. That was on the 27th February 1999. By then, uh, Olusegun Obasanjo has already ruled Nigeria for two good years. You have a man who died in office, uh, Sani Abacha. Maybe people in Liberia and Sierra Leone know him very well. Or they knew him very well because of his uh, political or the intervention of equals into uh, the civil. Maybe some people will call it civil war, some people will call it rebel war. It depends on which background that you are coming from. There was an election. Oluseko Nobasanjo, Matthew Chief. Matthew Luseko Nobasanjo actually contested that election. And when he contested the election, very strong man. He had an opposition by then, Olu Falki or Olu Fali. Olu Fali was the opposition by then. And the PDP, that is the People's Democratic Party, very, in fact, it, has, it is long, though you can see that the APC that we are seeing now is a transformation of party from one party to another. But the PDP has maintained a natural name up to this cause. So there was a tough election into Nigeria. But Manti Olusego Nobasa, you contested the election at least against Olufale, who was actually for it was like a coalition, like Alliance for Democracy and All People's Party. They combined together to contest against the military strongman. But by then we can understand the military were about to hand over power after the death of Sani Abacha. They are advocated to hand over power. But this particular chief knew, according to him, after the result we have been declared, he knew that uh, the military we are not willing to hand over power to a civilian. According to them, they said, or according to him, said the military clearly stated it that uh, a sergeant is better than a graduate. And why hand over power to somebody whom you do not you do not trust? Meaning, even prior to the election, he knew that the military was definitely not willing to hand over power to him who does not have any military background. That is what Olufale was said. And he said they prioritized the candidacy of Oluseko Nobasanjo. He was given preferential treatment and the military used him. They were single-handedly campaigning for him. They even started to give him preferential treatment to him to visit almost all part of the country to ensure that they carefully establish his victory. And in that election, uh, Chief Matthew Olusego Nobasanjo healthily won the election, though it was bitterly contested and the international community actually cried down it. But yet they accepted it that Matthew is no longer contesting as a military leader. He has hung his military uniform and now stepped down from the so-called maybe uh, uh, militant mentality of of a, a soldier now he has become an ordinary man and is definitely contesting the election when he contested the election he won he won he had a landslide victory into the election with he pulled a total vote of 18 thousand eighteen million seven hundred eighteen million seven hundred and thirty eight thousand one hundred and fifty four votes which gave him sixty two point seven eight percent of the total vote against uh, Olufale, who only had 11,110,287 votes. Then that makes him to get 37% of the total vote. So have you seen? So totally, let us agree that there was voter, voting appetite into this particular election. And the man who won this particular election uh, had around 36% uh, of the total vote cast. Then the opposition by then that lost in 2000, I mean in, in 1999, when you compare the total number, you are seeing he had 37% on the, on the presentation. And by then, we have around 93 million people who registered, 87 million collected their PVC. Only 20 million of them who actually come out to vote, which makes it so, so, so few. So there was actually, actually voter appetite into this particular election. And the voter turnout out, turn out by then was 52.3%. This one, the voter turnout was just around 20%. So, and seventy states actually voted for uh, Matthew Basanjo. Unlike this current uh, election result, the three presidential candidates, twelve states voted for each. But 
Bola Ahmed Tinubu managed to get 25% in two thirds of the 36 states, which gave him this, the opportunity around 2 million plus over his closest rival and the third rival for him to be declared the winner. And Nigeria does not run an absolute majority system. It's just simple majority in essence that you must have 25% of two thirds of the 36 states, and you must have you must you must have a majority of the total vote cast be in the name of the president. So on based on that 36, 36, then 29 and 24 percent is really an insult to democracy. So that was what happened in 2000. Said, I mean in 1999. That was how Ulusa Gonobasanjo came to power. So let's see. There was also another election conducted in 2003. Still Ulusa Gonobasanjo said, "I am still going," because. He, we all know him, very, very strong man, maybe one of Nigerian political godfathers and a very respected leader into the world if he did not. Or he also made silly attempt to ensure that he amended the constitution. He was about to commit a constitutional coup, but kudos to Nigerian by then, we are big enough and have the political mandate to maybe stop certain analysis of things that are definitely not good to be done. So they stop it. So let's see. In 19, in 2003, on the 19th April 2003, another election was conducted between Matthew Olusegun Obasanjo and the outgoing president, uh, Muhammadu Buhari. In that, uh, the voter turnout was also high. Matthew Olusegun Obasanjo won the election by 61.94%, 61.94%, and a total number of votes that he scored or pulled by then was 24,456,140 votes. Buhari had 32% of the total vote. He had 12,710,722 votes. And the total number of voters turned out by then was 69.8%. Unlike the 20% or 30% of voters turned out that we experienced in this particular election. Let's see in 2007. In 2007, there came a controversy. We know the military already used to power. Ulusekon Obas and Joebo never wanted to, to just relinquish power like that. Time was up catching up with the old man. And because of the turn chain of events, constitutional and democracy, presidential limitation, Obasanjo has served his two terms, eight good years, it was time for him to go. But then, in this last election, he has uh, Atiku Abubakar as his running mate. There was serious controversy. And Matthew Olusegun Obasanjo is an Igbo man. He comes from a Christian region or religion or he came from a Christian religion then Matthew Lusegon Obasanjo was actually urged to ensure that uh, he give the support of running for another presidential term to his VP by then Alaji Atiku Abubakar but Alaji Atiku Abubakar also fell out with Matthew Lusegon Obasanjo like what happened in Kenya I think uh, maybe William Ruto was just lucky to, to beat Raila Odinka to the election because his overlord, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, decided to support his long-time bitter outstanding enemy, that is uh, Raila Odinka against his own VP vice president because they felt that that was the same thing that happened into Nigeria in 2007. Obasanjo made a huge attempt to amend the constitution. The Senate voted against it, and uh, Article was one of the proponents or the proponents of that particular idea of them not allowing Matthew Lusegun Obasanjo to run for another election. The old man became bitter, so he supported another person against his own VP to ensure that Atiku Abubakar did not do not actually come to power. He ensured that he did not come to power anyway. So that was when he appointed. Omar Yadua. Yadua to be the
presidential flag bearer of uh, the president of, of the PDP. Actually, Erdogan is a Muslim, or was a Muslim, as Atiku Abubakar. But Atiku Abubakar thought that it was now his opportunity to come to power because he was the BP. Just like how what Buhari did. Buhari seated and allowed the professor who was his BP to be defeated by Bola Amen Tinubu. Even though prior to the election, many people thought that the BP would have won the but the Lagosian won the election against the BP and today uh, he was unable to contest for the election. So when uh, when he failed, he blamed Atiku for being one of the social rebels that orchestrated plan against So um, he blamed him definitely for for that particular failure. I'm sorry it was like a breaking transmission of our internet network. So he actually blamed him that he was actually responsible for his downfall. And based on that, we we saw that, that uh, uh, he he lost uh, uh, Obasanjo supported the chief. And when Obasanjo supported the chief, Omar Adla was elected amid huge controversy. It was widely alleged that Yadwa was sick for having chronic heart problem, and he was not worthy to become the president of Nigeria because he ended up dying in office. But Olusegun Obasanjo uh, maybe rebuked everything and he support the candidacy and definitely Yadra was elected. Unfortunately, uh, Yadra lost in life. Yadra lost his life in uh, 2010. Then by then, they have a Christian from the southeastern Nigeria, uh, Good Luck Jonathan, the man whose names normally follow him, Good Luck Jonathan. Good Luck Jonathan was appointed as the interim president. But because of the organization of the PDP, the PDP have both Muslim and Christians. So if a presidential candidate comes for two terms in office, the other term, the candidate for the PDP should be uh, a Christian. Matthew Oluseko Nobasanjo has already served two terms of office. Then, it was now an opportunity for another Muslim. And indeed, a Muslim was given an opportunity, but not the one that thought that everybody thought that he would have given, he would have been given the opportunity. That is Atiku Abu Bakar. So when Omar Adura came in, but being predicted as a man who will definitely end up dying in office, and indeed he came to pass, although uh, we saw a lot of prediction under the Buhari regime that he will die, but Buhari maybe proved his opponent and his enemies wrong. He lived up to expectation in terms of his health, although he took some amount of time in the UK to ensure that he battled seriously against death. And the man who was who successfully cheated death and up to today, he has lived to see the election of his political godfather, Bola Amentinubu, to another uh, election into Nigeria. So people we are thinking that. Now that an, a Muslim also came into power, but a Muslim died, and a Christian who was by default responsible to take over, because that is why their constitution state, took over. So there was some amount of disposing, maybe grief and whatsoever thing. In the election in 2011, the PDP, I'm not talking about the Nigerian constitution, but the PDP constitution, was violated by uh, Good Lord Jonathan. But Good Lord Jonathan assumed that I'm already in power. Somebody's ideology cannot deprive me for running for the presidency. I'm going to run. But what we are saying here is that the man whom he succeeded did not complete his term. He's a Muslim. And Obasanjo has already uh, completed a two term of office. He gave power to, I mean, he helped. Uh, Omar Adra to come into power, 
Unfortunately, Omar Adwa could not complete his first time into office. He died in his third year. He completed the term. So the best you can do now is to step down and allow a Muslim to come in. That was why Atiku Abubakar came. But still, uh, good Lord Genantai said no. He's not going to uh, support the candidacy of Atiku Abubakar. So Atiku Abubakar, who was definitely being uh, entangled with a lot of corruption allegations whatsoever uh, the independent nigeria electoral commission declared his candidacy null and void he took his the case to court the supreme court overturned the judicial or uh, the, the the national electoral commission to deprive him and he came to run the election under a con con uh, under action congress party unfortunately obasan uh, good luck jonathan who still decided to contest against the wishes of the Muslim, stood and he won the election. He won the election in 2007 at the, at the surprise, I mean in 2010, in 2011, at the surprise of many people. He won the election, uh, he had around 22 states that voted for him, while Buhari had 23 states. Then uh, he had around 22 million 495 votes, 495,187 votes, unlike Buhari, who had 12,214,853 votes. And the voter turned out by then in 2000, uh, in, 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 in 2011 was uh, 58, I mean, uh, he, he won 58%, point 58.87%, uh, 58 while Buhari had 31.97%. Uh, and the election was conducted on the 6th of April, 2011. So let's come back to 2015. Buhari now finally had the opportunity to come. The first time ever in Nigeria history for an incumbent president to lost the election. That was when a uh, good luck Jonathan in part. By then, we are now seeing the activities of Boko Haram was definitely about now to come and take place. We are seeing now in places like Bonu, Baisa State, Nanja Delta, some arm robbing activities, Islamic State have started to develop, bombing was taking place, even Abuja was no longer safe. People like places like Lego during campaign time, there we are sporadic bombing and the response was also sporadic. It was not systematic, it was sporadic. And there was no proactive measure being taken place to curb the activities of Boko Haram. The movement like uh, the movement for the emancipation of the Nanja Delta, all of them we are so aggrieved. Then Buhari came in, a planning house from Kashina State. And there was grievance in already. Mind you, Christian, Christian, Christian. Obasanjo was a Christian, he ruled for two terms. Then uh, Omar Adura came in as a Muslim, he did not complete the time. Uh, good luck, Jonathan took over rule for one year. Yeah, so they are not two years. So there was a month, maybe because of that mentality in Nigeria. Most of the Nigerians said, No, we are not going to vote for this one. Even though I'm a PDP member, no, I'm not going to vote. A lot of people cross carpeted to the APC. And Buhari was re energized. The man was facilitated by a lot of PDP members. And yes, then those who cross carpeted had the opportunity. To campaign vigorously, but he had some state governors cross carpeting the state assembly members because of all sort of mentality. Unfortunately, uh, Jonathan is not, not an old army member, he doesn't know anything about it. So, the man he lost the election definitely to Buhari in 2015. When he lost the election, Buhari had around 15,424,921 votes. Uh, Jonathan had around 12,853,162 votes. And the total number of votes for, for Buhari by then was, uh, was, was the total number of votes for Buhari by then was, was that 15,424,921 votes. Unlike uh, 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 Jonathan, who has 44,000, 44 me, I mean, 44, I mean, 12, 000, 12 million, I mean, 853,000, then uh, 162 votes. But that particular election, in fact, it was postponed. It was first meant to take place in February. But because on February the 16th, that was when the election was about, was supposed to take place. But because of the activities of 
four voter uh, PBC or personal voter ID card distribution, the activities of Boko Haram, and other movement. It was delayed until the 28th March when it was being conducted. After its conduction, Buhari emerged uh, victor with 52%. So finally, uh, the Christians, the Christians lost their hegemony over Nigeria, and we saw a Muslim who also got uh, led as a military man won and he also had the opportunity to rule as a civilian to tend to continue democracy but it was the first time in nigeria history for somebody in a non uh, an, an incumbent uh to lost election an incumbent to lost election to a party then let's see now in 2015 in 2015 that was the election 2019 in 2019, another election was being conducted. It was widely predicted that uh, Buhari is going to lose because of his ill health, Atiku Abu Bakar, fifth time contesting election. So everybody was thinking that, oh, this is the first time. It's Buhari, I mean, it's Atiku Abu Bakar. Unfortunately, uh, Buhari proved his doubters wrong. He won the election. He got 19 states, 70 states to Atiku Abu Bakar. Then uh, the voter uh, he got around 15 million 191,847 votes. Why Atiku Abubakar got 11 million 262,978 votes, and Buhari had 55.6 percent of the vote. Why uh, Atiku had 41.22 percent of the vote, and the election was actually held on the 23rd February 2019. The turnout was 34.7 percent, which was also relatively low compared to the same one that we are seeing. Now, finally, we are here. We are uh, Bola Amen Tinebu. We are Bola Amen Tinebu, a Lagosian, a political godfather, an accountant, a businessman, a political tycoon, a man who has been into Nigeria, went into exile after a hard some fracas with the military and everybody was thinking that it's the best time that Atiku should come to power Bola Mentinibu surprised everybody I think maybe I also I am also flabbergasted if I may think or think so I am really surprised he'll be hugely surprised but maybe I can also say another way I am astonished or somehow surprised but definitely uh i knew that things like that maybe are just possible but it is even possible for more pieces of surprise to take place but to many nigerians i think this can be a disappointment but definitely not a surprise reason being we all know the power of incumbents and uh, even the ruling pdp let us say things like this if you want to analyze things critically the ruling pdp went into this election divided Mind you, this uh, Peter Obi, who had 24% of the vote, he scored about 6,101,000. He was the running mate for Atiku in the last election against Buhari. And if 24 million or 24% plus 29% of Atiku, plus Peter Obi would have been added together, then a PDP would have won. If we are arguing it logically, if we are watching at it, had Peter Obi not decided to form his own alliance, his own party, maybe if he had gone into this election as a running man still to article, just maybe, I'm just saying maybe, they would have won the election. Unfortunately, they weren't independent. So you can see, the APC, when solidly codified, well prepared, structured, with constructed mentality, and with all other rigging intention, they did not divide. Unfortunately, PDB was a divided one because the running mate of 2019 became a presidential flag bearer in 2023. And that same flag bearer. In 2023 also had his own candidacy maintaining the same party 
Maybe I think it is high time uh, Atiko Obaka say bye bye to Nigerian politics. Six good time. By the time Bula Amentinebu leaves office, Atiku will definitely be 80. He is now 76. Bola will be 74. Peter will be 65. If, if Bola has the opportunity to continue living, maybe he will be 78 by the time he relinquishes power. If he is going to relinquish power, then by the time he does so. But his health is also questionable, and we are praying and hoping that what happened to uh, Omar Adwa shouldn't repeat itself. So let's see, Bola Amentinobu on 36% of the total vote cast, 8,794,726 votes. So appalling. Even the third person into 1999 election had enough vote than him. Even throughout Article loses, he had enough vote more than this current president. But yet because of the maybe the the careful setup of the Nigerian political system, it is not an absolute majority system. The system only requires you to have a simple majority, but you must have 25% of that particular majority of vote that you have in at least two thirds of the of the states. And Peter Obi had 12 states. Atiku had 12 states, and Bola Ametinebu had 12 states. But Atiku and Bola Ametinebu did not score enough in most of the other states where they did not have the full advantage that would have actually sent them, they give them the numerical strength against Bola Ametinebu. That is why he saw Bola Ametinebu win. On another school of thought, Bola Amentinobu won because the election was not free and fair. EU criticized it. Olusegun Obasanjo came out. The minor system, the manual system actually brought him into power, but now we have a sophisticated, well liberated society and a bonite system where you think straightforwardly clear, maybe make right decisions. Uh, the, uh, the system was being carefully corrupted to ensure that you have a man whom they want to definitely come into power. Unfortunately, since the POTA system was no longer working, then uh, Mr. Yakubu, the, 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 the INEC commissioner, had all the opportunity to ensure that he does what he thinks he thinks is necessary to do it. And the Electoral Commission says, I'm going to declare the result. If you have any grievances against me, take me to court or take the commission to court. But they are doing their natural right, the constitutional mandate given to them. Now it is up to the court to come to the rescue of the common man. But does Nigeria have that particular over $700 million to contest another election, taking into consideration insecurity, dwindling economy system, banditry, poverty, and the high inflation that the country is suffering from? The concomitant effect that COVID-19 is having on the country, Ukraine-Russia war, all of these things we are definitely happening. And now, uh, situation like that are going on, and there is cry. There are, in fact, in Anambra State, Akwa, that is the, the the capital city of Anambra State, people are quiet. People are not happy. They feel that their 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 rights we are being violated. They exercise their constitutional right. But the electoral commissioner uh, did all what it, he could into his own power to ensure that they are being disenfranchised. That is what they are saying. Because if they if their franchise was hard and really based on what they did, then Bola Amentinobu shouldn't have been elected. And a 70 years old on paper has won the election in physical nature. Maybe he could be old as enough as uh, Paul Bear in Cameroon. Then Peter Obi has, Atika Obaka has 29% of the total vote, that is 6,984,520 votes. He calculated insult based on the numerical strength. Then uh, Peter has 25% of the vote, that is 6,000, 6,101,553 votes, and he also won in 12 states. So the general uh, uh, thing now for this vote, one, let's first establish there's political apartheid into Nigeria. Why? Because of the activities of politicians. 
young people like us may tend not to vote because if you know that your voice cannot cross the table no matter what you do the system will be manipulated political apartheid was everything there so just to think of it thinking outside the board maybe people really knew that even irrespective of what they might have done their votes are definitely not going to be counted and whomsoever the electoral commissioner want to declare he will definitely go ahead to do the voter system fail then nigeria also People wasted their time and energy on this particular election. In fact, even the economy was shaken by this particular election. Over $700 million was spent on it. In a country, over 210 million people. And if, in actuality, the court with her own moral conscience, would she mandate or order another election into Nigeria, especially the presidential election, or go the gubernatorial, no matter how expensive it will be, because you have the senatorial election, you have the gubernatorial and the national senate. I'm sorry, there was a breakage transmission due to four nights ago. There is the state senate and the national senate. All of those things are coming now into interplay, and it will also end up to create huge amount of problem. So what they are saying now, that election cannot be wrong. Just maybe on a moral conscience and uh, i think that has never actually happened in nigeria history maybe this could be a very peculiar one peculiar one maybe this can be set as a precedent but taking into consideration nigeria current economic status the oiso is no longer performing this new president has to tackle his surgeons it has to tackle the activities of banditry they have to tackle corrupt officers have to tackle the COVID-19 crisis, Boko Haram, and even a mix of religious mentality. They have to come around. So this new government has a lot on its plate to do, and there is political apartheid, there is disappointment, there is failure into the system. What EU will do? What the AU will do? What ECOWAS will do? What will the common Nigerians do? Will they accept this? And this also draws to another thinking. You have seen Joseph Bimabwakai in Liberia, Alexander Cummings, then with uh, George Ria. Maybe arguably, I think George is the youngest among the three. Maybe you are having troublesome politician like that, but who is arguably, I, I, I know he could be a member of parliament to cause commotion, but he can definitely not run for the presidency into, into Liberia, I'm speaking of Yeke Koloba, very controversial. He cannot definitely run for the presidency. I don't know, but morally I don't qualify him to run for president. I think three people like that are coming into contest. Will Joseph Yumabaka pull the trigger against Josuya? Will the election of Bola Amen Tinubu give him the mojo to stand up against President George Manawea. We, Alexander Kumi, have all the political influence with all his wealthy experience abroad, have the political mandate to win the Liberians. Liberian is suffering from maybe poverty, illiteracy, and ignorance. And we are all seeing the concomitant effects of the war very poor economic system, a society that is carefully relegated. Here women are always relegated to the to the status of childbearing and housewife. The education system is so poor. And you're having ill-equipped politicians who take themselves to office very corrupt and scrupulously, receiving brown envelopes. The country is backward. I was there in some part of December 2022. It's my home country, my motherland, I know they are very well. Things are definitely not going on as expected. We need a system. We are having a systematically corrupt system. And it is part of it. There is something, something fundamentally wrong with Liberia. We need a system, a strong government that will make, make some corrective measures to ensure that people are elected on quality, have given merit to politicians. So maybe. What happened into, into Liberia, I mean into Nigeria, 
can be carefully studied and those mistakes should not be repeated in both Liberia and Sierra Leone. We are disappointed as Africans. We are not happy with the failure of that particular electronic system and everything have been woefully dashed. There is anxiety, there is cry, and still Africans, we are hopeful. Sometimes they say, it is bad to know, it is bad not to know, but it becomes worse if you wish not to know. Maybe, I think I feel politicians to come back together. And uh, West Africa or Africa is our homeland. Any chaotic situation, we render all poorer than what we are currently complaining about. The election was a disappointment. It was a sham. It was well miscalculated, carefully rigged. People's opinion have not been heard. And if we can see what happened to Nigeria, Going to conclude, 80, 93 million people registered. 87 collected, 87 million collected their PVC. 16, 6 million voted for uh, Bola. I mean, 8 million voted for Bola Mentinobu. 6 million voted for Peter. Another 6 million voted for uh, for for Atiku. So if you take the hundreds that we are added on those things, let's just say arguably it is around 22 million. So we are 87 minus 22. We are did the 55, I mean 65 million people go. They did not vote. They definitely did not vote. Because our politicians are failures. They create a system that we are we turned out to be beggars. And watch our system that we don't want to do. To conclude, normally we say, and I will keep saying this statement, when good citizens do not vote, or when good citizens do not vote, bad leaders are normally elected. So everybody is complaining today, but maybe Nigerians can easily start to think, question themselves. What happened with the city? Five million voters who did not participate. How would the relation result? How would the election result have turned out had they voted? Or how would this election result have been if the voter system had worked? Who should we blame? The voters who did not vote? The voter system? The electoral commission? The deliberate delay? Or the activities of Nigerians themselves, those bandits, the armed robbers, the Muslim separatists, and all others. It's been me, Edward Amara, who calls on Liberia, West African correspondents, giving you update on the Nigerian election. This was Roundtable Africa. Thank you very much for listening. Join me back.